welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my three tropical houseplant trees here. So I'm going to go through each one, tell you how they've been growing over the last year, give, them, give you a little bit of the history of how they've done over the past previous years as well. And basically what I've got here is on the left hand side I got a, I've got a avocado tree that grew from seed. In the middle I've got a frangipani um, or pl plumeria that I've been growing for several years and on the right I've got a large ficus uh, elastica or rubber plant which I've also been growing for several years. So I'll start off with the avocado tree and I'll tell you a bit more about how that's been doing. So as you can see the avocado tree is quite a size, it's already actually hit the top of the conservatory. I've grown this for probably about four or five years now but it hasn't really got to a large size until the last two years. So I started this from an avocado. This is actually a has variety of avocado which is the most common variety we tend to get here in the UK. And I just basically kept this on top of some water in, in a jar until it started to grow root. Then as soon as it started to grow root I planted it in soil and it's been growing away happily ever since. Now when it was a younger plant it grew a little bit slowly, it was in my flat in Edinburgh so it didn't have optimal light conditions or temperature and it just grew slowly there and it grew a constant st uh, straight stem so you can see from the bottom up to around about this point here it's a very straight stem and then it starts to split and then it goes into three main stems so it went into those three main stems around about last year, uh, spring of last year so it grew quite large last summer. I then cut it, I had to cut it back quite hard because I knew it was going to grow a lot again. Basically now it's in the conservatory here in, uh, in my new house. It gets a lot more light and in summer it gets much higher temperatures. So it does a lot better in this environment and it grows a lot quicker and a lot larger. So you can see it's actually already touching the top of the conservatory roof. Now I did actually prune this in spring and I actually cut it back quite hard. So you can just about see where I cut it back. It's this little uh, kink in the stem round about here. So that's the height I should cut it back and all the stems were cut back to about that height really to give it a lot of space for it to then to grow and even with that amount of space for it to grow it still managed to hit the ceiling. What I'm doing with this plant now is I'm growing it for its large leaves so what I'm doing is every spring I cut it back hard I, and then I, I break off most of the new shoots so it just has three main shoots. What that does it encourages much larger leaves. If you just have lots of little shoots you'll tend to get smaller leaves so you can see some of the leaves on the bottom are particularly large that's after I just gave it a trim and you can see it grew these extra large leaves. These are looking a bit uh, tatty now because basically it was very hot over the summer. It got a little bit of a scorch when it was the hottest days because I was away for a little while. I allowed this tree to dry out when I was away for a week. And um, that's, what ca that's what's caused these scorching on the leaves here because it was particularly hot weather, it was around July time. But you can see all the newer leaves are much nicer, much healthier. They're a little bit smaller though because it's not just after it's been pruned, but basically I prune it hard, that encourages very strong growth. I reduce it down to just two or three main stems and that encourages these really large, nice tropical looking leaves. And it looks quite nice throughout the summer. What I'll do now because it's coming into winter is I'll leave it unpruned. The more leaf area it has, the more light it can absorb. It's very dark here in Scotland. In winter we tend to have very short days, very low light levels because we're so far north. And where this conservatory is, it's facing a northwesterly direction. So. In the darkest months of winter, this almost gets barely any sun, direct sunlight at all. It gets a tiny bit towards the end of the day, but generally this gets no direct sunlight. And in summer, it gets direct sun from midday all the way till sunset around 10 o'clock. So it gets plenty of light in the summer. This is why it's growing so big and so fast. It's a very thirsty plant as well. I have to water this two or three times a day in the middle of summer. And I will be upgrading this to a self-watering pot, which the other two tropical trees have. But it's been doing quite well for me. Uh, so I'll, go, I'll continue this uh, thing where I just cut it back really hard every spring and then let it to regrow. Uh, it grows easily a meter every year. So what I need to do is maybe in the future I might have to think about pruning it twice a year because I'll need to repot it soon and with repotting it it's going to make it even more vigorous and grow even faster. And also it takes up a lot of space and a lot of light in my conservatory where I'd like to grow other plants. So I might start pruning it twice a year maybe once in spring, another time midsummer, just to keep the size down a little bit so it doesn't hit the conservatory roof. And maybe in the future I might even try planting inside, outside in my parents' garden where they don't get too much frost. They're right next to the coast. Just because I feel like it's getting too big now and it's a rather large tree to have in a conservatory which already has two other large trees. So that's the avocado tree. It grows nicely. I'll probably never get avocados on it, but I really like it for the large foliage and uh, it's just an interesting plant to have in my conservatory. So another large tropical tree of mine is the frangipani here. As you can see it's quite a size now, it's taken up this entire corner of the conservatory and I think this is around the biggest it's ever been. Now I had to cut it back quite hard when I moved house so it was cut down right about this level here 
Previously it had been almost as high as this but with less branches. I had to cut it down hard just to make sure I could transport it easily. So I cut it around to about this height here which is about 2 or 3 foot in height. And um, it grew quite well last summer, grew all these long stems. But there was lots of individual small stems because basically because they'd cut off those original main stems, each stem that was cut off then grew about four or five new ones. But I wanted to encourage large stems with big leaves and that's more likely to encourage flowering. If I have lots of little stems it's less likely that this will probably flower. What I did this spring is I kept the longest and largest stems but the little ones I took off uh, thinned each main, main uh, trunk because this is a multi-trunk tree. This has always been multi-stemmed. I removed all the multi-stemmed um, branches and just left one on each main trunk and that's resulted in this large luxuriant growth that we've got here. So it's done really well this year. Most years it's quite badly plagued by thrips but this year there's very few thrips. You can see the leaves are nice and, and green, not too much damage at all. There's a little bit of thrip damage early in the year. You can see here a slight mottling on some of these lower leaves but I have these beneficial insects which are tiny mites and they eat the thrips so they've actually kept it at bay this year and it's done really well. You can see the leaves have grown absolutely huge. I really like the look of this plant. It's got these really nice large tropical looking leaves and one day I might get some nice flowers from it. It does have nice flowers. I'm not sure the colour of, of this variety. The most common variety is normally white with some yellowing on the edges but you can also get pinks and reds as well. This one, I actually got this plant uh, several years ago probably about eight or nine years ago. I got it through the post, it's quite a small plant. It was always multi-trunked and it has a lot of uh, branches coming from the base. I kept it for several years in, a, in just a normal household environment. It got quite a large plant. It started taking over quite a bit of my living room. The old living room where it used to live was very sunny, had a really large window. So it did quite well there, but it was never really sunny enough or hot enough to get it to flower. I was hoping this year I might get it to, to come into flowering, but I've not managed to. Now it does get very warm in here, just up to 35, 40 degrees on a really hot summer's, summer's day when it's nice and sunny and it gets plenty of light as well but I've still not managed to get any flowers in this plant so I'll see if I can manage to get some flowers next year. Generally with frangipanis each stem needs to grow unpruned for a year or two before it can flower so these are now two year old stems so they're old enough to flower but for some reason they've not yet flowered for me. So I'm hoping maybe next year I might get some flowering. If I don't get flowering next year though, I'll have to prune them again because they'll be hitting the ceiling. And in fact, there's one on the right hand side that you can just about see there, which is already getting quite close to the ceiling. And the growth from this isn't as quick as it is with the avocado. So the avocado grows about a meter a year or three foot. This only grows about a foot a year, but you can see another foot and it will hit the, the, hit the ceiling. Now when I did first prune it, it grew about two foot, but it's slowing down now because the size of the pot is starting to reduce the, uh, the size of the plant. Basically, if you don't keep increasing the size of the pot, the smaller root system that the, pot, the plant will have will restrict the growth and then it will slow down the top growth. So I think that's what's happening here. We've still got lovely large leaves. It's, it's quite an interesting plant because although it doesn't have many stems and it doesn't have any side branches, because the leaves are so long and so wide, you can see this, this narrow uh, stem coming up here has actually taken up a lot of space because it has a really big canopy of leaves. So I, I do like this plant, the frangipani, but as I say, it hasn't really flowered for me. And um, It has produced flower buds in the past, but it tends to produce flower buds for me around September, October time. That's just when the light levels are dropping here in Scotland and it tends to, to uh, then go into dormancy and stop growing and then you don't get any flowers um, because they tend to abort, the flower buds fall off because there's not enough energy for the plant. So I'll see how this one does. It, sometimes it's deciduous, sometimes it's not. When I've had it in my, in my living room before, it tends to keep its leaves as long as the temperature is warm enough and it doesn't have too many thrips attacking the leaves. So I had several winters where this was evergreen all winter. Here in the conservatory, this year if it was in the, in the house it would keep its leaves because the leaves are nice and healthy, there isn't too much thrip damage. But here in the conservatory I tend to let it get down to about 10 degrees at night time in the winter and it only goes up to about 14, 15 degrees during the day. So this will probably go into dormancy just because of the cold, colder temperatures. So I suspect this will lose its leaves probably around November, December time. And when this does lose its leaves I let it go dormant and I don't water it at all for two or three months. It has large succulent stems and it really doesn't like having its roots wet when it's cold and when it's dormant so I'll keep this unwatered for two or three months over, over winter time. Then comes springtime, it's very slow to start growing. And I, don't, I only give it a tiny bit of water to stop the roots completely drying out. And I don't water it well until it starts to put on growth in spring. But once it does start putting on growth, because its leaves are so big, it's a very thirsty plant and I need to water it a lot. 
Fortunately, I've got it in a self-watering pot at the moment, and that self-watering pot holds about five or six litres of water, so I only need to water it every couple of days, even in hot weather. But it is a very thirsty plant. It takes up a lot of space. So we'll see how it does this winter. I suspect it'll drop its leaves soon. And it's interesting, when it does come to regrowing in spring, it's very late to get going. It really needs a lot of heat to get it started. So this is normally bare without any leaves until about June or July. And then it comes into growth. It grows rapidly for the two or three months over summer. And it stops around this time of year, September time. It doesn't grow anymore until next June or July. So it's a bit of an unusual plant in that it grows rapidly when it does grow, but for most of the year, it's just kind of dormant or it's, it's not growing at all. Uh, I think it really does need a very hot climate, a lot of sunshine. So it's struggling a bit here in North Scotland. It grows healthily, but it just doesn't seem to flower that well for me. So the last plant I'd like to show you is my rubber plant. So I've had this one not quite as long as my frangipani, but probably about uh, six or seven years. So it's still quite an old plant for me. This one grew in the same living room, but in a less sunny location to the, uh, the frangipani. The frangipani needs lots of direct light. It basically needs loads of sunlight, very sunny position. The Ficus benjamina here, although it's a large tree, and in the wild it would grow in direct sunlight, it can do quite well in low light levels, because when it's a young plant, if the seedling, it might be growing in a rainforest environment. So it might be on the forest floor with low light levels. So it's, it's a very adaptable plant. I had it quite w far away from the windowsill, quite low light levels. It grew slowly for several years in my old flat. I then brought it over here last spring. I cut it down this to about a meter or so in height just to get it transported up to North Scotland. It then got frost damage, it lost all its leaves just about and it damaged all the tops of the shoots. It then grew incredibly bushy and had a very bushy plant and this spring I had to do a little bit of pruning on it. Basically what had happened is because it was damaged by the frost it then caused the main leading shoots to be killed off. It then sent up lots of side shoots. Those side shoots were making it very messy. There was loads of growth at the base. It didn't have a nice clear stem. So I cleared the bottom off and give it a nice clear stem. Uh, then let it let it regrow. And with the highlight levels here, it's grown incredibly fast. So this plant was probably only about this height in spring. And it's grown uh, almost a meter in height this year. And several stems as well. Also because of the highlight levels and because it, I cut it back so hard, it's grown extra large leaves. So it's got some really nice large leaves on the plant now. Really nice big glossy leaves. I haven't actually cleaned these for a while, but it's not too dusty in this conservatory. And so I haven't polished the leaves or anything. They're still quite glossy. They still look really nice. So it grew, it's grown extra large leaves this year because of the high light levels and the higher temperatures and it's just grown really fast. So as I say, Ficus elastica, it's a very adaptable plant. You can grow it in low light conditions. It'll just grow slowly for several years for you. It won't really grow very quick, but it won't die. It's very, it's so it can handle the low light levels. I mean, if you do get direct sunlight, make sure you slowly introduce it to the brighter light levels. Otherwise you can get leaf, leaf scorch. But once it's adapted to the high light, then it will actually grow much faster and you'll get much larger leaves because that's much more the environment that it grows naturally in the wild. And these can grow into absolutely monstrous trees, probably 30, 40 meters in height. So, so I, I really like this plant. Um, I've always seen them because I, I grew up in Hong Kong. We had a lot of these growing in the parks around Hong Kong. So I always found them quite an interesting plant. And now this one I'll have to also prune in spring. I was going for more of a tree shape and I've achieved that with a clear stem. And then these uh, bigger branches coming out from the top. So I need to do some pruning in spring just to keep it under control. This one on the right, for example, is just about touching the ceiling now in the conservatory. So that will need a prune. And all the other ones are actually getting quite large as well. So I'll probably do something similar this year. Cut it back hard, but I'll allow it to re-sprout two or three shoots from every prune point. That will give it a more branch structure. It will mean, however, I'll lose a lot of the larger leaves. When you allow a plant to have lots of branches, it tends to have smaller leaves than if it just has one or two large branches. But I think it will just um, keep it a bit more compact, hopefully. I can keep it from spreading quite as far as it has spread at the moment. Now it's also interesting to see with this plant that you can tell that the time of year and the amount of light it gets really makes a big difference to the size of the leaf. So the leaves at the base, for example, down here are really quite small. Uh, that's because that was spring when this was growing and it was quite small. It then got larger. Midsummer it had these really giant leaves. And more recently, the leaves are actually getting quite small again. So particularly this one at the top, the newest one, when the leaves do appear on this plant, because they come folded up, they appear pretty much full size already. Some plants, when they grow a new leaf, when you first see it, it's tiny and it slowly gets bigger and bigger. With Ficus elastica, the leaf grows to almost full size, rolled up in this kind of sheaf here. And then when it comes out of that, it's almost full size already, so it doesn't get much bigger. And so you can see here, the new leaf is already quite a lot smaller than the previous ones. 
that's because it's the end of September now, the light levels here aren't very good and so it's starting to slow down its growth and they'll be dormant soon and I won't expect much more growth until around May time next year. So there's one interesting thing I'm going to try with this and that's to do with the aerial roots coming out of the main trunk. So you can see here there's lots of aerial roots coming out of this plant. What this plant does naturally in the wild is it grows long stems and then it sends down these long wispy aerial roots. They then reach the ground, thicken up and they become a bit like supporting trunks which can take the weight of those branches. So it's a bit like a banyan fig, how it grows out with multiple trunks. So what I've been doing recently is, in the past I've cut off all these aerial roots, but with the high humidity here in the conservatory they've been doing quite well. So I've actually been training them into the soil, and one or two of them have started to thicken already, such as this one here. There was this big one at the base here which is really thickened up. Um, that one's pretty much at the ground level, so it's not really an aerial root. But um, you can also see that one around the side there which has thickened up nice as well, coming straight down. So I'm going to encourage a few more of these and uh, see if we'll get an interesting um, aerial roots coming out. If I get loads of them and they get really thick, what I might actually do is cut the main stem off here and here and then just have it kind of floating on aerial roots. I think that might look quite interesting. So I'll definitely keep them growing. And in fact, you can see one's growing from higher up. So right up here in the crown of the tree, you can see these aerial roots. In the wild, these would trail down with the high humidity down 20, 30 meters from the top of the tree right down to the ground and create an unusual aerial structure. So that's about it for this video update on my tropical trees. Now I'll give you guys an update in springtime when it comes to pruning. The rubber plant here will need a lot of pruning because it's getting really quite large. The avocado tree here will need the most as you can see. It's really starting to hit the roof now. It needs cutting back hard. Frangipani I will try and leave unpruned because I would like to encourage flowering but if I have to I might have to prune this back as well just because that will hit the roof probably by the end of next summer and then I'll also need to retrain my Madagascan jasmine you can see here it's trailing through all of these uh, branches starting to climb over these plants and kind of smother them so I'll be retraining that probably along the top of my conservatory here just to give it some more light and more space to grow uh, but that's about it for this update. So I'll see you guys next spring when I'll come to pruning these.